Hi, Connor. This is Alan Cockle with ABC, former hitting coach for the Colorado Rockies and the Seattle Mariners. Connor, we're going to take a look at your video this morning, analyze a little bit what's going on. The first thing that I always look for with guys is, is even though the setup is the, is the one area of hitting that you're going to see the biggest differences with, with hitters of all ages, um, I do have some principles that I like for guys to keep in mind. And the biggest thing for me is we want to start under balance and maintain balance. So to keep balance, my head stays inside my knees and my knees stay inside my feet. And if we can do this throughout the entire process, it just gives us a better chance to control the barrel of the bat throughout the whole process of hitting. Okay, so you're in a good position to start out with. We're going to run this forward now into the load up phase. Okay, we'll run it forward. And when we load, what we're doing is, again, principles that apply. This knee is inside this foot. You're in a good position here. What I want you to feel in your load is I want you to feel weight being shifted into the inside part of this back leg. Okay? I don't want, and you don't do it, you know, this knee to work outside this back foot so that that, that weight would get on top. But at this particular point in your load, we need to feel weight on the inside part of this back leg, the inner part of the thigh. Okay? We're going to run this forward now to the foot down position. Okay, with most hitters, yourself included, the toe will land first, but it is not until that back or the stride foot heel fully plants into the ground am I loaded. Okay, so now that your heel has come down, you have your foot down. When coaches say get your foot down, that heel's got to be planted into the ground for my foot to be down. And I cannot start my swing until that heel plants into the ground. Okay, the things that I look for here now are I want to make sure that my hips are square to home plate. I don't want this front hip to be leaking open quickly. I want to make sure that I have good equal athletic bend in both knees. Okay, we have it in this knee, in the back knee, in this front knee. We're a little bit straight or straighter than we are uh, in the back knee. And, and the biggest thing that I look for with hitters is this stride foot. When the stride foot lands, I want to make sure that this stride foot is no more open than 45 degrees. And you're, you're at 53. When we start to get open more than 45 degrees, it causes this front hip right here, it causes it to want to leak open just a, <clears throat> a little bit early. And when that leaks open, we have difficulty handling pitches that are out here on the outer half of the plate or outer third of the plate. As a right-handed hitter facing right-handed pitching, uh, you may already, but as you get a little bit older, you're going to see guys that have better command of throwing their fastball out there and curveballs and sliders that are going to be going away from us. So we need to keep these hips square and keep this front hip right here squared up to home plate. And all of that is caused, in my opinion, because the stride foot opens more than 45 degrees. This 45 degree angle is where we'd like to be. Okay? Once we get fully planted into the ground with the stride foot, we have two moves. We have a lower half move that will be started with this back knee. This back knee will drive or transfer the weight that you had in here. We're going to transfer that energy and that weight or shift our weight into the inside part of my front leg. Okay, That's the first move with the lower half. The lower half provides direction to the baseball and then it provides drive through the baseball. So in a sense our power comes from our lower half and that drive and that weight shift to and through the baseball is what gives us power. The first thing that happens with our hands, and this is probably another <clears throat> term that you've heard, excuse me, the back elbow will drop down into a slot right next to the rib cage and the back hip. Okay, And when this el back elbow drops down, we're going to run this forward to this position right here. We're in a pretty good position. We call this the connected position. I want shoulder, elbow, and back hip all to be in alignment. Okay, I get this connection along with this drive and this shift of weight into my front side now from here, the hands work forward. The hands work in front of our connection, which is this. 
they work in front of that connection, they work just past our center of gravity, and then we start to release the bat through the, through the baseball at contact. Okay? As you can see here, I'm going to erase this so you can see this. As you see here, our next move is our elbow has continued to work forward just a little bit. Our hands haven't moved in front of that connection, which was back shoulder, back elbow, back hip right here. And it's just about now that the hands are starting to work in front of that power source. Okay, I would rather see the hands work in front more right in this area where our center of gravity is, our belly button, our, um, our belt buckle on our pants. Okay, And because our hands haven't worked in front of that until this point, what we're going to get is we're going to get a lack of, of extension through contact. Okay, We'll run it forward to contact. Now your hands have gotten in front, and we get to contact, okay, and now the next thing that you're going to see is your bat. This was, this was past contact, this was contact. Now our bat is going to start to finish its arc, and we're going to pull across our body. Let's see if that's the direction. See how your hands are pulling that barrel across the body. We don't have the barrel staying through contact long enough to get good drive and good extension. Okay, We would like to see that arc once I get to contact. We'd like to see that extension. And if my hands had moved past my center of gravity right here, gotten out into this position, now I would see a much fuller, a much longer arc in my follow through. Okay, And that extension allows for, it just allows for all of the, all of the principles prior to all kind of add up and, and just get good drive through the baseball. And all we've done here, Connor, is we've just we've cut our swing off because of this move right here. When we get to right right here, we got a good connection. We've got good drive into my front leg. Good weight shift. Now from here, the hands are going to go forward. Okay? What we want to feel like is from this particular position, we want to feel like that top hand is is uh, skipping a rock across a leg. You get a flat rock and you're going to drive that elbow down into the slot and then now the elbow will continue to work forward but the hand works in front of that power source to maximize the speed of your hand to get that rock to flat uh, that flat rock to skip across the leg. So the top hand right here we want to feel both hands working forward, and then we just want to feel like I'm releasing the barrel or I'm skipping a rock across the leg. Okay, that's that's the biggest area that we could clean up. The only other area I think we could clean up would be this area right here, keeping that stride foot at a 45 degree angle. Okay, so what we're going to do to a drill to, to kind of help with this is I'm going to put a T on over here on the outside third of the plate pretty much even with my stride foot, okay, I'm going to put a ball on there, and we're going to get into the loaded position. Heel's going to be down, just like that, okay, I'm going to start my drive with my back knee, I'm going to start that transfer of weight into my front side, I'm going to get into the connected position, and this is simply going to be a top hand drill. I'm going to, I'm going to think about skipping the rock or releasing the barrel through this ball out here. Okay? I'm going to hit this ball if I'm in a cage to the right side of the cage. If I'm on the field, I'm going to hit this ball line drives through the second baseman or line drives into the right center field gap. But what this drill will help you feel is maximizing your bat speed and keeping the extension going through the ball so we hit this ball as hard as we possibly can without getting big, using a lot of extra body parts to, to do this. So you got your connection right there. Now from here, I'm just going to, my top hand is the only hand on the bat, and I'm just going to skip a rock, or I'm going to take that barrel, and I'm going to release and throw that barrel through this ball and try to feel extension with my bat staying out here towards the flight of this ball, through the second baseman, into right center. Then I get a much longer, fuller finish, and, and, and I've hit the ball harder without exerting any more effort. Okay, bud? Hey, I want to thank you for coming to our camp, and best of luck.